Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Miles Basketball Training and today I'm going to give you five of my rarest defenses that I have seen myself as well as overall rare defenses that you will find as well. So let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. The first play is going to be a full court press defense. The rest are going to be half court defenses. So let's just get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. Okay, so this first defense is a 3-1-1 full court press break. Now, the reason why this one is rare, because it does leave open the long passes down court, which if your team is playing against an older team who can actually see down court and get the ball down that far, you might be able to beat this defense really well. However, this is a great shocker defense because what's going to happen is, let's say we get that ball inbounded, we're going to have player 1 and 2 Full court pressing right away. Player three is gonna then gonna run inbounds. The idea because why I call this a shocker is because we're gonna have a double team right off the bat where player one, if he's not expecting that, could turn over the ball really quickly. Player three is then going to jump in front. Player four is gonna be shadowing this side if there's a player over here. Player five is then gonna move over towards that elbow to cut off any kind of a pass if it's going that kind of a distance. He might even wanna take a foot outside of the three point line as well. Now, if they start to reverse the ball, we're gonna have player one still guarding player three. Player two is gonna move over, cutting off the pass here. If there's a player over in this area of the court, we're gonna have player three over there guarding. Now, player one is gonna tr try and force player three over. If player three passes over to player two, we want a double team and player two to move over, and we want this double team to move that player over towards that side of the court. Meanwhile, we're going to have player four move over to be able to cut off that pass and player five to move down. Meanwhile, those two players are going to be forcing to try and get that player to get trapped in that corner. We don't want anything up the middle, so we may have player two kind of shadowing player three to watch out for any kind of skip passes over that uh, invisible midline. Or personally, I like to have player two move back and allow player three to get that ball to reverse just in case because we don't want the ball to get too far up the court. We're okay with player three having it because once he gets it, player one is going to be guarding him once again. And again, if they try to reverse, we're going to have player two over here, player four, player five move where those players are there. We're going to have player one move over for a double team, player three to move down or possibly to guard the middle again. And then they're going to try and force that player over towards this corner here. Now in our half court game, the box in one is usually a very rare defense to come up against unless you have one good player on your team and everyone else is not very good. Now. The reason why this is rare, or was used to be rare, is because, well, it does leave a lot of the perimeter open for three-point shots if the other team has a couple of different three-point shooters, or at least distance shooters in general. Now, this has become popular recently because of the Toronto Raptors, where they have used this against Steph Curry in the NBA Finals. Now, in this defense, we have four players playing in a box zone, so it's going to look like this. And then we're going to have player one, for example, guarding player one blue one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if player three was the really good player with the ball, we would then have player three guarding player three, or at least our best defender guarding player three. Now, with this being the case, if the ball is over in this corner, we're going to be having player five front facing or behind or on the side, whatever it may be. Player four is going to be shadowing the middle of the key. Player one is going to be guarding this zone and player two is going to be guarding this zone. Now, the downfall to this defense is, let's say player three drives and player one will collapse because, of course, they don't want anything to happen in the key, but also player three doesn't ever want to leave player three blue, in which case they could just pass out for the long shot. And because they're really not worried about the three-point shot, player two will this just be covering the, the middle of the free throw line where he's not going to be contesting player one. He may have his hand up, but it's not going to be a very close contest. And then if player two gets the ball passed to him, we're just going to have player five guarding the middle of the key, player one moving over, player two moving over. 
and again player 3 is still guarding player 3. In theory this is a good defense to run against a team that has only one good player. Now you're probably wondering, oh my god, I would love to run the box in one, but I have a team that I'm playing against that has two good players and nobody else I care about. Well, this next defense is for you. It's called the Triangle and Two. Okay, so we have the Triangle and Two. So let's say we have player one and player two being the best players on the other team. Everyone else is garbage. We don't have to worry about them. They're not going to score. Well, what's going to happen here is we're going to be having player four guarding in a zone here, player five guarding in a zone here, and player three guarding a zone here. Meanwhile, player two and player one are man-to-man -man defense, and they're sticking to their man. doesn't matter if player one passes to player three and player one cuts to the opposite corner. Player one is sticking with him. Meanwhile, if this is the case and player three is wide open, we're going to have player three just move over, player five still guarding his man, player four guarding anything going down the middle of the key. Meanwhile, these two players are still isolated and not getting that ball. Basically, if they're playing off ball, they, your defense, these two men, have to be in deny defense the whole time. Within at least a foot. Within a foot the whole time. Player three can take up that shot. That's totally fine. We're going to have three rebounders. If he tries to drive, that's totally fine. He's going to be defended. If he tries to drive down middle, player three is just going to be guarding the middle of the key in case he tries to spin off, and player five is then guarding two players. Again, this is only used at generally the younger age group, and if the other team only has two good players that you have to really worry about. Now, I'm going to show you the perimeter defense. Now, I'm not going to get too technical because I do have a book coming out about this very soon. Now, Go if you if you see this uh, video and you want to see, check out this this defense, go check out the link in the description below. But again, what we're gonna have is player one. He's gonna be coming up and playing defense on player one. Now, if this was their shooting guard, for example, we would then have player two moving up. Meanwhile, what we're gonna have is player one. He's gonna be defending this side of that player, so that that player is forced into a double team with player two. Meanwhile, when that happens. We're going to have player 5, he's going to be moving over, and player 4 is going to be moving towards the center of the key. That way, we don't have a pass over here, obviously to player 3. We don't have a pass down to player 5, because player 5 is going to be covered, and player 5 red has got the entry passing lane. Player 1 can't pass to player 4 blue, because player 4 red is cutting that pass off, and he can't pass around, because player 4 is now also cutting that pass off. The whole idea behind this defense is anything from the free throw line and up, actually maybe a foot below the free throw line and up, is going to be a double team. Unless the player is at the point, then it's single coverage. The whole idea of the player being on the point is to be able to be pressured in to being into a double team. If player 3 blue moves down and we start having player 1 blue dribble out towards the side, out of that double team. We now have another double team starting. We now have player 5 move over and he's going to be guarding both of those players. The passes to those two players. Player 4 is going to be moving down and he's going to be cutting off the pass towards the post and player 1 is going to be cutting off the pass to the wing for player 2. <laughs> player 2 comes up, that's totally fine, still cutting off that pass. If the pass goes down to player 3, player 5 is still popping out to guard player 3. We're going to have player 4 move down, and player 1 is going to be moving down as well. We still have a double team up top, or we could have player 2 just drop off a bit to cut off any passes going towards the perimeter. Again, this is the, a great type of defense that is going to help you stop the 3 point shot. Now, if they try to swing that ball back around and have player 3 cut baseline, which is a type of play that I run quite often. What's going to happen is if they do somehow get that pass by a double team, because when the ball is in this corner, the player who's the outlet pass to swing the ball, he's going to be basically double teamed by those two defenders. So he should not be able to get that ball. If they pass down into the post, we're then going to be having player five move down, player four cut off that pass, and player one should be low enough to be able to cut off any passes to the opposite post. Player 4 is not playing post defense on player 5. He is staying back. That is player 5 red's job is to play post defense on player 5 blue. 
Again, this is a type of defense that is not suited against a team that's very strong post-wise. If this is a very guard-heavy team that you're playing against, this is definitely the defense that you want to run. Because player 5 is going to try and pass it out, and let's say they do pass it out and they try to swing. What's going to happen now is we're going to have player 1 moving up. Let's say they swing that ball. Player 1 is going to be up. Player 2 is also going to be up. Player 2 is going to be then trying to force him into player 1 as a double team. We're going to have now the post players, or the post player. He's going to be swinging around again now guarding two players at once. And player 4, because there's no players out here, is going to be guarding the cutoff pass to player 4. So player 5 in this case could be just a little bit on this side of the half of the key because player 4 can still cut off that entry pass. Now if they do do a baseline cut out towards that corner, player 5 is going to see that because he was guarding player 3 in the first place. And now he's going to be following player 3 out and we could have player 3 red move down, but that's not the main thing yet. We're going to be seeing player two still in a double team if he can dribble out of a double team that's going to be something else and we're going to be now having player four move over and player two is going to be dropping off and now player one and four are double teaming player two again now we might have just one to two seconds of a triple team player two should not be able to get out of that and now we're going to be having player three pop out Player 5 should be following and player 4 should be dropping off to watch that, that low post. Meanwhile, we're going to be having player 3 cutting off any passes to player 5 or to player 1. Now, I'm not going to get any further into this defense. However, if you want to check out that book, check out the link in the description. It's going to be called the Perimeter Defense. Now, this is called the Unbeatable Basketball Defense. Now, this one is near and dear to my heart. This is a defense that I 100% created myself, and it basically cuts off everything from the free throw line and below. So I'm not going to go into extreme detail like the last play. I went into about 75% of what you need to know about that defense. This defense, I'm going to give you maybe 10% of what it does. Basically, everything below the free throw line extended is a double team. And what we're going to be having is, let's say, up top, player one is going to be in single coverage. This is a type of defense that you're going to be running if you have zero confidence of the other team hitting a three-point shot from the top in single coverage. Because anything from the free throw line and below is going to be double coverage. If player one passes over to player three... We're going to have player 3 red pop up just a bit. He's still going to be guarding him because it's close to that free throw line. However, as soon as player 3 pops down, below that free throw line extended, we're going to have player 3 and player 5 double teaming. Player 4 and player 2 moving over. Player 1 guarding the free throw line. And the cutoff pass uh, for the reverse. Now, I'm not going to go any further detail into this defense. However, this is a great defense to run. Go check out the unbeatable basketball defense below. Now, I hope that these basketball defenses help your team win more games. If they do, let us know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you, and I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.